Okay, good. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is about student ownership and engagement. And um, I've been a teacher for quite a while now, teaching PE, but also uh, coach sports. And I've uh, been in the classroom as a social studies teacher. And I've learned uh, over the years that it's good to uh, give student ownership and be more of a guidance, a guider than a teacher. Uh, once we start doing that, I feel um, students are more engaged. So then I have a question for you. Does student engagement lead to ownership? Or does giving them ownership leads to engagement? So this is something that we can think about um, during this presentation. Um, how do we create ownership? Of course, how do we do that? Um, I have a video that we're going to watch, and then I would like to, what, would like to ask you, what would you grade? Okay. What grade would you give, guys? Grading. Mm -hmm. So watch this. So what would you grade? Looking at this, what would you grade?
sleep, watch a little bit uh, of this game, and you have the observation for maybe together you'd like to uh, go through the observation form and uh, discuss together what you've seen and what you think this game is about by follow following the steps that I have on the paper. So take a moment and just move them through. Of how to look at a game and how to observe the game. 
They, get, they gain knowledge by doing this, and this is just an example of the rules. And they know how to take action. So they are, take ownership whilst learning. Um, and we can have discussions like, is this game working? If you don't have all the equipment, you can adjust it. Uh, you can ask them why it's working, why it's not working. You can ask them to look at strategic skills. You can ask them to look at just one skill, because the skills that come back while we're observing are, for instance, growing skills, but also catching skills. We go back to the physical literacy that my husband just spoke about, um, and they have gained that knowledge already. So you, if you're doing basketball, instead of just teaching them, you can ask them to, look, to pick out one skill or assign them one skill. They do research on that, and they gain knowledge of why that skill is important within the game, where it's important, and when you need it. So when to dribble a, a bounce a, a ball to the students, or when to throw it overhead, for instance. This way, they start owning the game. And they don't need you as much, and within the team, they grow. So that's the idea behind me not teaching them, but me guiding them, then, then gaining ownership, and at the same time, hopefully engagement. Or the other way around, I engage them like this. The students who might not be an expert in or uh, with skills, they have they become an expert with knowledge. And within sports in general, we need people who that who play the referee and who have played the game themselves. So they might not necess necessarily find up as as uh, um, a player, but as a coach or as a referee or any other um, thing we need. In, in professional sports, basically. Um, so, again, that question, were you engaged? And if we had played this, if we had time in the, in, the, in the gym, of course you would have experiences. But I don't think we have time. <laughs> With primary, I this by how far, how fast. Right? These are two exercises. And I, I put down instructional lessons. I have done this from grade one and up. And it worked really well. Sometimes the grade one students were better than my grade fours, so I've never done this. Um, and so I give them instructional lessons. Jeffrey is handing them out. Yes. They learn, again, how to observe. They learn how to, even you can go beyond the sports in this case, they learn how to multiply, uh, multiply or they learn how to. Uh, to, they gain more knowledge of what is fast. My son often says, I'm the fastest. But of course, within grade level, you can see, yes, I'm the fastest of the class. What does it mean to be fast? But compared to maybe world record, is it being fast or not? So you learn, they, they learn how to set goals, even already in grade one. And they use mathematical skills to do this. So you're not just, um, teaching them about uh, PE, but at the same time they're actually teaching them a little bit more about math as well. So in the, in the gym, I wanted you to make two groups, but again, we don't have the time to do this, so you can use and practice on your own. Uh, these are two simple uh, examples um, uh, that you can, uh, and then I did them on purpose from an age, um, from an age here, grade one and up. And if, if you want to go younger, you can disappoint them of being a teacher and students follow them. That way they become engaged. They are owning that piece of the lesson. If you ask them to do a warm-up, and you start with the ones who aren't that shy often, and then the ones who are more shy will follow. But from, if, you, if we start teaching them like that from that age on, um, in the end, they will be the ones running the sports game or a sports competition, and they know which roles they can play, and they're engaged, and, and they own um, sports in general as a community. Because in the end, I think that's um, what we need. Like um, a, a professional sports athlete cannot do it without his team members, even if it's an individual sport. And how does an individual, how do, how do they know how to set goals goal professionally? Or um, how do they know how to, um, what to aim for if they don't know what's out there and they can find a sport that fits them? So that's how we can reach from the classroom 
and make that connection to the professionals, to the coaching, or at least have a create sports members who want to stay active all their life and what type of sport that is. That depends on what we offer them and where they find that enjoyment in. Um, and again, I have that question then, but of course, it's, it's the experience that counts um, if you were engaged and, and if you had ownership. And I think the more knowledge we have, the more fun it is to, um, to participate or to look at a game on television even. If we don't know the rugby rules, rugby is really hard sports to watch. But it's the same for soccer or other sports. Um, and so, a little reflection, I'm rushing through this. I have five more minutes to go. Please talk to each other and look at these questions. And then share with me what after what you what you came up with.
any more information, my email address is underneath. I love to discuss things and share ideas and learn from others as well. So, um, especially being new to the country, don't hesitate to reach out and then we can do some things together. So, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And we will share this video and all the resources after the conference, Wendy. So, I think we'll be sharing with them.